Hey guys, what's up? You saw 13 here. So I'm gonna do this video quite differently. I figured every once in a while I should change it up. So overall, this video that you guys are about to watch is pretty much a commentary video on a new mask that I just made. If you guys don't like me talking, please just shut off the video and watch something else. But anyways, this whole entire video is dedicated to heart work diagnosis, which is a new mask that I just made. It is actually an upgrade to an old mask, or in this case, a recent mask that I made, which is obviously heart work. Speaking of heart work, if you guys have not checked out the original video for it yet, please do. That video itself has a lot of views, a lot of likes, and a lot of comments, and I really thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. I really do. So the three main topics that I'll go over in this video about the new mask is the symbolism, the making of the mask, and a question that I keep getting from a lot of people, which is, why don't I sell my death mask? So hopefully you guys like this commentary video, so I present you Hot Work Diagnosis. A lot of you are probably wondering how this mask was made. Alright, so let's start with the cast. This mask is casted in Ecoflex uh, Silicone 50. I personally use Ecoflex Silicone 50 because it's mid-range when it comes to the pot life and the drying time. So that's why I chose that material. You can buy it at SmoothOn, so you guys should totally check it out. This cast itself, it's not actually casted. It's pretty much sculpted using popsicle sticks and uh, obviously Ecoflex uh, 50 with thickener in it and that's pretty much how I got this uh, intricate detail right here all around so as you can see this is all sculpted in silicone which is quite a challenge at the time I made this the as you all know this is a death mask um, so how did I get a death mask to be a full head mask without making a mold for it well it's quite easy and I'm going to tell you guys how I made it right now so as you all see, this particular um, area, which is practically the face, here up to here, and all around, that's pretty much my actual death mask. And uh, I actually have some uh, preliminary, pi preliminary pictures for it in my iPhone, and I'm about to show you guys that right now, and I'm going to show you guys how it looked uh, at the time before all this stuff was put onto it. So as you can see, so as you all see, uh, hopefully you guys can see this, this is on my iPhone 4. Uh, this was the first picture I ever took of heart work. As you can see, it is very, very basic at the time. It was a fresh cast. I like how it looked at that time, so I took a picture of it on, my, uh, on this phone and uploaded it to my Facebook mobiles. <laughs> I was really proud of it. Uh, I never actually pigmented a death mask that was not grayish or whitish of any color. So I tried to match my skin tone for it, and I was quite successful. So that's what it looks like before. Uh, it's practically, or it is a death mask. So that's what it looked like before. All right. So the next, all right. So the next photo is where I got a bit detailed. Uh, as you can see, I cut the jaw open. And that is basically a part of the detail of heart work itself. Uh, and I was thinking of, um, as you can see, I cut off the mouth so that the jaw hangs loose. And the reason for that is so that I can have a good uh, jaw movement. And how do I achieve that? Uh, well, it's quite easy. You take uh, whatever cast material you casted your mask and you put a little bit of uh well this is for silicone uh, i put a little bit of thickener so i thicken it up right i thicken up the silicone after that i take a popsicle stick and i put a small amount of um of a uh, silicone with thickener on the areas right here so it's kind of like an elastic uh jaw movement but it's with silicone if that makes sense and as you can see uh at the back of the head that's where i started sculpting the the full head part you know so it was a quite it was quite an interesting experience I've never done it before so as you guys can tell uh, this is the actual uh, death mask right here it's not that hard to tell and at the back as it gets to the head to the um back of the head area that's when everything is all uh, manually sculpted using so, uh, silicone with thickener using a, a, a popsicle stick so that's the cast um, 
Now, if you guys are wondering who that is, that's actually my girlfriend. That's a picture of her. It's, uh, to be exact, it's a thumbnail picture of her. I photocopied uh, a couple of pictures that she gave me so I can put in my wallet. I photocopied those pictures, printed them out, and embedded them within the mask. Now, a lot of you are saying, um, why her? Well, as you all, as if, if you guys read the, um, the symbolism for, for the original Heartwork video that I posted up, uh, in the past, you will, you guys will know that this mask was dedicated for her. So that's why her face is in the head of the mask itself. It's embedded in there, uh, symbolically that she will always be in my head and in my soul. And that's how I demonstrated that symbolism right there. Now, if you guys are wondering how I did that, well, as I said, I took, I cut out um, little thumbnail pictures of her. And in these areas right here, I don't know what you call this. I basically put the picture beneath that, right? And then you mix another batch of silicone, just a tiny amount, and then and then uh, smear it uh, with using a popsicle using a popsicle stick or a spoon so that it creates like a thin membrane of silicone so that it covers the face or the actual photo itself as you can see now what you do again is you take another dab of a silicone with thickener and you put it behind it so it's a permanent seal of the picture now let's get into the paint shop now the paint shop is quite interesting uh, this is the this is the f the first mask ever that I have uh, airbrushed using um, toluene. Now, as you all know, toluene is very hard to find to me personally. It's the chemical that you use to dissolve the uh, psycho paint. And uh, as you all know, psycho paint is the paint base that you use to paint silicone masks. So you need uh, a chemical agent called toluene that truly dissolves it so that it's very, very liquefied and you can airbrush with it. That's what you need. And I've been searching for I've been searching for it for months now, and finally I found it a couple of months ago. And as a result, this is what I got for my first airbrushed uh, silicone mask. I personally love the paint job, even though it's my first. Uh, as you guys see right here, these are hand painted. They're supposed to be veins. I did a terrible job, <laughs> but it's fine. I like it. And the bloody tears, as you all see there. Um, if you guys want to know how I make how you make a uh, blood drip on your mask you obviously have to make the color of blood first if you guys don't know how to make that it's uh you mix red with a tiny bit of blue and this applies to any medium there is and you should get like a nice blood like uh, color to it not too dark not too light now when it comes to uh, masks if you guys want to make the blood drip you basically add more thinner to whatever it is you're using. So if you guys are using latex colorants, um, add just a couple of drops of ammonia and you guys should liquefy it real, really good. But then again, since uh, latex colorants are, are already um, liquefied, there really is no need to add ammonia. Now when it comes to uh, psycho, or when it comes to um, silicone masks, for psycho paint, you have to add uh, quite a lot of uh, toluene to really liquefy it, and that's pretty much how I got this. So I basically let gravity do its thing. Gravity is your best friend when it comes to making blood splatters, blood drips, and whatnot. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's get to the external pieces. As you guys can see, uh, these are actually syringes. These are real syringes with no needles in them. I figured I would not want to put needles in this because when I wear this mask I don't want the needles to bend and prick me because as you guys see the needles are sticking out like right here if, if there were needles in it and there's a chance that I can bend them w using my jawbone so I don't want to do that but it still looks good anyways I don't know about you guys so where do I get these syringes uh, I don't have any more syringes at the moment but the first batch I ever got was from my dad uh, he used to work at a hospital back in Virginia when we used to live there uh, we uh, now now we live in California since uh, November 2010 
So that's pretty much where I got my syringes from, from my dad, who used to work at a hospital. Now, you guys are wondering what the liquid is inside. It, it is not what you think it is. It's basically, uh, it's basically water with food coloring in it. Now, the actual strap itself, uh, I don't really want to explain it because I already did explain it in a tutorial video that shows you guys how to make this. So if you guys haven't uh, seen that, please check it out. You guys will love it, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, the, stra the straps themselves, they're made of duct tape with cotton in them, and these are double cap rivets, and that, I believe, is a binder ring. <laughs> now, the blindfolds themselves are actually made of, uh, real hospital gals. I got this at the, uh, out of my local 99 cent store. Yeah, as, you, as you look closely, it's actually not just, uh, gals. I stained it using, uh, red food coloring, and I can tell you guys it was a real messy job. So, yeah, I stained the gauze, and, or aka the blindfold, to make it look bloodstained, you know. And of course, that safety pin right there is holding it in place. Now those rings that you guys are seeing right there, those are, like I said, those are binder rings. Or that one is a binder ring. Uh, I don't know what this one is called. It's like a D ring or something. I got it in the hardware department. Uh, as you all know, uh, Heartwork did not have stitches whatsoever, but then I figured that my jaw movement failed because it wasn't, it did, I mean, it did move my mouth or my jaw, it, it's just that it was too loose around my jaw. So what I did was I completely sliced the mouth, Heath Ledger style, and but uh, and I took some twine and I stitched it so that it's a permanent seal. Not to mention it's a tight fit, and that's and that pretty much solved my loose jaw problem. That little nifty device right there. All it is is basically safety pins, and uh, cosmetic uh, clippers. I believe that's what they are, and sculpting wire. And that's pretty much what they are. And the reason why it looks cool on this mask is because the way I built it. You know, I got the uh, safety pins aligned up and they're actually embedded in the mask itself and on top of that I interlooped the uh, the hair clip on the safety pins themselves and super glued it and then I took some sculpting wire made somewhat of like a brace like you know like a braces kind of thing and a loop and a looped it at the end of the hair clip I did not super glue it now the, now the hooks that you guys see there are actually hooks. Uh, they are not fake, they're real. That's why this mask is a bit of a, it has like a safety hazard to it because I've pricked myself several times from those hooks. Uh, those are fishing hooks. I bought them at my Target. Uh, I can't believe I actually found some because they only had one more package left of hooks and thankfully I found them. And of course the hooks are, uh, they're supported by the same twine that I used for the mouth stitch. And that's pretty much how I made hot work diagnosis and the kind of materials that I used for it. So the question that I keep getting from everyone is why don't I sell my death masks? Well it's quite simple really. It's more of like a personal reason. It should be a personal reason. Why? Well, because a death mask, especially if it's a cast of your own face, that's something personal, don't you think? Why would you sell your face to some kid or to some adult around somewhere around the world? I don't know about you, but that's a bit creepy, don't you think? I made a death mask tutorial for a reason, so that you guys can learn how to make it yourself. And hopefully, and hopefully get inspired by my death mask videos, so that you can create your own variants for your own death mask. No, seriously though, I like seeing you guys push your creativity to the limit. If you guys have a limit, I want to see what you guys can come up with with your own death mask, with your own face. And that's the beauty of it. My tutorial video serves as the basis. And that's pretty much why I don't sell my death masks to people. Hopefully you guys understand that. Now the symbolism for hard work diagnosis is quite 
in a sense universal because the inspiration behind the symbolism for heart work diagnosis is based off of people who are under the influence of victimization. And what do I mean by victimization? Well, getting victimized by themselves. Certain people in life know that they are getting victimized by something or by someone, but yet they are so blind to the cure when it's right in front of them. It was as if they chose to not even take the cure at all. What I'm basically saying, ladies and gentlemen, there are people in life who know that they are getting victimized by something or by someone, and yet they don't do anything about it. So they get victimized even more which leads to a lot of negativity in their life. And that's pretty much what symbolizes the, the bandage around the eyes. Not only certain people are blind from their own courage, they're also silenced by it. People don't admit that they get victimized in life. One thing that interests me in today's society is that kids these days, uh, especially teenagers, no matter what kind of shit life brings them, they still don't speak to it to someone. They don't help themselves get out of the problem. They choose to silence themselves. They choose to blind themselves from this particular problem that's blocking their life. Fear is not something that everyone should have in life. Everyone should have the courage to, to move on from something catastrophic. No, the mask itself, originally, it still has the burnt, melted, like, skin to it. Well, that basically symbolizes pain and I know I, I know you guys are probably saying oh wow you saw 13 another mask about pain pain is something that can branch out to many things that's why I make symbolism for it because I can relate to it anyone can relate to pain they don't have to be blinded by their own problems but they choose to they know a cure but they don't have the courage to take it which doesn't make sense now the device on the actual mouth itself that symbolizes the silence that people endure to themselves instead of Having the courage to talk about it to someone else, they choose not to talk about it. They cower in their own fear and their own problems. We were blessed with speech, the ability to talk. Why don't we use it? We were blessed with eyes, so we can see. Why don't we use it? Now the syringes themselves, beside the head, that symbolizes the cure itself. That symbolizes the cure, or the poison, in a person's life. They can choose to get the poison, or they can choose to get the cure. What's cool about the mask itself is that it's quite obvious. It's literally right there on the, on the side of their face, but they choose not to take it. They choose to suffer. And that's pretty much the symbolism for heart work diagnosis. So hopefully you guys like this commentary video, and hopefully the mask itself. But hey, I direct my own videos, right? So why not change things up a bit every now and then? Please like, comment, favorite, and subscribe if you are new to my videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys later.